when you're in the moment or you experience those moments um, to embrace it, um, that's one thing I think is important is to embrace the moment because I think we're always looking for the next thing that when the moment's there, you kind of just let it fly by and not really truly embrace it. So I would definitely say, you know, embrace your moments, live in the moments because they may only come like once in a lifetime. Greetings and welcome to When the Moment Chooses You. I am your host, Coach Charlene, and I am extremely excited today that I have Mrs. Delaware, Alicia, with me. So, Alicia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I'm really excited to hear a little bit more about you. I actually was talking to Miss. Jessica, and she mentioned your name and I saw you on one of the lives she pulled me into. And I'm I'm just really excited to hear about your journey and what has happened. And so just a little bit of context for my listening audience, the reason why I did this particular podcast, it actually was a heart project. And last year, I wanted to do something that brought joy and meaning for me. And this is one of the things that I love to do. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to start a podcast. And um, when the moment chooses you really derived out of me being called into a moment to respond to an injustice that had happened with the murder of George Floyd. So I kind of got this stirring up on the inside of me and I became very vocal about things. And I wanted to bring change and transformation. Uh, Actually, because it was so disheartening, I went into prayer and then I heard these words, what you do in this moment will determine your destiny and dictate your future. Mm -hmm. So ever since then, I moved from the anger, the anguish to action. And so I've been bringing all of the enlightenment that needs to happen. I'm open to share my story. Okay, so first of all, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, sure. So I am Alicia Shaw. I am a wife and mother. I've been married for 13 years, or almost 13 years. I have two girls, Genesis and Serenity, who are 10 and 5. Um, I'm currently a project manager for Amtrak Railroad, but my history has been a mental health, well, a substance abuse counselor. So I was a, a counselor for about six and a half, seven years. Um, I enjoyed it, but when I started having children, the pay of being a counselor here in Delaware was not cutting it. So I had to kind of find a little different um, career path, but I do have license licensing as a a uh, chemical dependency professional, as well as a master social worker, but I don't utilize those. Uh, I'm going to get back into it one of those days, <laughs> but um, uh, that's pretty much me. I recently, well, not recently, but a year ago, I was crowned Mrs. Delaware um, after competing in pageants here and there um, since I was about 17. Um, and this just came as like a good hobby to get into, but this last time it meant something different. And that's why um, I felt like it was, like you say, that moment, it was just something that I needed to get me back to myself. So um, even though I enjoyed pageants and I've competed before, this one was a little bit different. It was something about this one that was special to me. Okay, that's great. And now you said something that I think I want to unpack a little bit. You said you had to come back to yourself. So can you Mm -hmm. share a little bit bit about what that means? Yeah, so um, I would say maybe like 2019-ish, 2018, um, I started to notice I was uh, irritable, frustrated a lot, um, found myself being very angry, and I couldn't figure out, pinpoint what it was. And for a while, I would say about a year or so, I kind of lived my life uh, like a robot. I would go through the motions as wife, mother, um, but I wasn't really checking on myself or making sure that I was good. And Thankfully, I have women in my life that kind of noticed that something wasn't right. You know, um, I had this one lady, she's a part of my prayer circle that kept saying, you know, every time I speak to you, everything is so negative. Like, you know, what's going on? And I was thinking maybe I was sick or something was happening to me. Um, I even went to the doctor and was like, I don't feel good. I feel weak. You know, what's happening? And all the blood work and everything was coming back okay. But then he did a depression screening on me. And I'm not like, I'm not depressed. I mean, I've been in the mental health field. I know what depressed looks like, at least so I thought. But um, as he was reading the, the questions from the screening, 
I was fitting, I was hitting a lot of those points. And I think what was happening was I was getting lost in those roles as mom and getting lost in those roles as a wife, wife that I completely forgot about myself. I was making sure that I was eating and surviving, but I wasn't really checking on me and making sure that I was okay. And I was falling into a depression and, um, it was for me, um, that moment where I said, okay, something has to give because I, like I said, I have kids, I have a husband. I don't want, I don't want to affect them because I'm not well. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's something because that's something that we really, I, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, honestly, to be, I think about, let's see, my son now is about 20. Yeah. He's 27. And so when I first had him, I had no idea because I'm a nurse and I can see the signs and I know when somebody has postpartum depression and all of that, mm. but I had it and didn't even know I mm. had it. And yeah. so I start with, well, this is what really was the clincher for me is my husband's sweet, sweetest pie. He wanted to take me out to get my first Mother's Day outfit. And so we went and we went shopping and, you know, I'm like sweating and I'm like, I can't find anything because I had gained like 75 pounds. And so uh-huh. I already had a body image disturbance. Right. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. we went and he found this really cute outfit and I tried it on and I walked out and he was like, wow, that's beautiful. Da 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 da. And I went back into the dressing room and it had mirrors all over the place. And I'm telling you, I saw myself as at least 500 pounds in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And so I totally plummeted. I got upset. I just stormed out. Let's just go home. I don't want to do this. And I started noticing things like that. And I had totally slipped into depression and did not even know it. So thank you so much for being transparent and and open about that, because I think we really need to talk about that a little bit more than we do, because we have our mommies that are really suffering um, in silence because they think something's wrong with them. So that's awesome that you did that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was crazy because I never really um, realized that what I was going through or like the symptoms were symptoms of depression. Um, I just felt like I was tired. It was more, it was mental, but it was also physical as well. Like I was tired. I felt like I was getting headaches and I just didn't feel, um, healthy really. And that's why I kept going to the doctor. Cause I'm like, something's not right. And he's like, we did blood work and everything's coming back. Okay. But I think my demeanor in the office made him say, okay, let's just try depression screening. Cause I know I was kind of like, <sighs> Mm-hmm. You know, it it had become the norm for me to react that way. To I didn't even notice that anyone else was even noticing that I was kind of depleted at that moment. Wow, wow. So okay, so let's talk a little bit about your moment. Tell me a little yes. bit more about the pageant itself and how did that whole journey go? Yeah. So, so all of that um, kind of really played into me competing again. For, um, for this title, because again, I, I competed in the patents before and I actually competed for this title like ugh, 11 something years ago when I was only three months married. And um, when I realized what I was feeling was depression and that I needed to make a change, I know people, I know this may sound crazy, but I was so thankful really for the pandemic because that was something that I needed. Um, I needed that reset. I needed to be able to just shut down from everything because that was a moment where I really decided to connect with God on a different level because I grew up in the church. I know of God. I, I, that was part of my, my upbringing, but I never had a relationship or I never understood past just going to church. So I used that time to really connect with him and say, you know, something has to give. I can't walk around depressed all the time. I can't walk around feeling sad. And, you know, I, I think a lot of the things that I was hearing was the enemy messing with my head because he knows that I can stay in my head, you know, and it just spiral. And he was using, you know, that, my thoughts and my words to really keep me down. I'm like, God, you have to change that voice. I have to, I can't hear that voice. So I use the pandemic to really, you know, pray and journal and to connect with God, to understand what he wanted for me and how he saw me. And, um, a lot of doors just opened when I decided to do that. Um, again, like, um, I was telling you earlier how, how I, um, I became an author of a book of an anthology 
And in that anthology, it was called I Am More Than Enough. I had to really break down what it was that I was battling with and what I real- what was keeping me depressed, really. And what I realized, what it, was, it was my issue with trying to be perfect, trying to be the perfect mom, trying to be the perfect wife. And there's no such thing. And I was putting myself like, you know, having these high expectations for myself. And there was no such thing. And because I, couldn't reach, I wasn't reaching that perfection, I was feeling depressed about it. So I actually wrote about that. And then writing about that, um, I realized I had to do more things for myself. And what better way to focus on doing things for yourself is to, to compete in a pageant. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, like, I'm going to have to make sure I'm in good health. I'm going to have to make sure, you know, I'm confident. I'm going to have to make sure my mind is right. So after kind of going through those small little steps of, you know, praying and journaling and, you know, really getting down to what it was, something just said, try this pageant again, because you're going to have to focus on you. You're going to have to make sure you're taking care of yourself in order to present in front of people. Do the pageant. So I did. And I, um, it was crazy because I never felt like I had, I, I had did a lot of preparation mentally and I never felt so confident, um, in a pageant as that particular one. And it's because I had really done some work and I had really, tried to understand how to get back to myself and how to get back to myself was revisiting the things that I enjoyed before I was a mom and not trying to be perfect in everything, you know, not trying to be the best mom and, you know, not trying to be the best wife, but just, you know, putting my best foot forward. So when I, when I got into that pageant, I knew in my heart that it was something that even if I didn't, you know, win, or even if it was, you know, it didn't come out on, on my end, I did so much like soul searching and so much um, um, self work to make me feel good about being on that stage. And luckily it was like, everyone else saw it too, I guess, (laughs) because I I actually won it. But I also think it's a blessing in -hmm. in disguise because I'm able to share my story, you know, on on a bigger scale now as Mrs. Delaware, because I think a lot of women experience that but don't really talk about or don't have the space to talk about, you know, you know, sometimes the downfall is being a wife or being a mom and how we don't take care of ourselves all the time and how we put our families before us. So it's allowed me to be able to share my story with other women and to hear so many people say, girl, yeah, <laughs> I was there. Yeah, exactly. So it was that your platform message that you used as Miss Delaware? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so it was um, momming, wife and queening is my platform. And it's just basically empowering women not to get lost in those roles, but to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, that you're filling, you're filling your cup before you're trying to pour into, you know, your families, because at the end of the day, if you're not together, they're going to be all over the place. So I use it as my platform. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's uh, Thank you for sharing your story on that. Um, <laughs> let me talk to you about barriers. T- tell me if you ran into any barriers. <laughs> I heard one barrier, and that's the enemy within. I call it the enemy within, those uh, inner critics, that, that voice on the yes. inside just telling us that we're not enough. So I thought that was interesting that you have a book yeah. that's called, what, I Am Enough. What's the I name of it? Enough. I, yes. am more than enough. I Am More Than Enough. Yeah. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that book, because that's a great title. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's actually it was a, um, an anthology with, um, I think, like 20 or 25 other women that were that came together to talk about, you know, their struggles. And so, yeah, and I was I was an author in that book and I talked about my issues with perfection. That was actually my title. The title of my book was uh I mean, the, t- the, the title of my chapter was Perfection is a, is a Disease of a Nation. I think Beyonce says that in her in one of her songs. But um, that was a barrier for me, thinking that everything that I did had to be perfect. And what I did, um, or what I talked about in my chapter was how actually my background in Christianity and the church contributes, contributed to that, <laughs> um, feeling like I had to be perfect and I had to learn how to see God for myself and how to go to him to basically reveal so that he can reveal to me who I am and not try to go off, you know, what religion says we should be or and things like that. So I broke down a lot of uh, how that issue of perfection affected my marriage, how it affected, you know, um, my being a mother, how it affected even being on the job, feeling like I had to do everything right or, you know, it's not going to be good enough. And um, again, my barrier was perfection and the voices in my head telling me that I wasn't enough or that uh, there was always something wrong with me. So 
for me, barriers always came as little voices in my head, not necessarily outside. I had to learn how to to change the, the, the voices that I hear. Yeah, that's awesome. And so you did the work to find out who you really were. Yes. By changing yes. your relationship with God. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. So yes. let me, let me, let me hear a story. Maybe one that can highlight because this is International Women's Month and Women's History Month. And um, I, I'd love to know if there's anyone that mentors you. Did you have a mentor to help you out? Yes. Yes. Actually, um, there's been several women in my life that have looked out for me or just kind of been that voice of reasoning. But on one particular mentor who um, I just adore, her name is Tamika Hall. She's actually the person who was a visionary author of the I Am More Than Enough um, anthology. And we connected. It's so crazy how the world works because I had been following her on social media for years, but never knew who she was. So when she posted this opportunity um, about the book, I was like, hey, I'll give it a try. And in connecting with her on the book, she has been a blessing to me because she's the one that's kind of pushed me into purpose um, because she's read my stories because I've, I've been a part of about three of her books. And so each time I've been a part, she's had to read, you know, something that I battled or something I struggled with. So she's always used, uh, always, always encouraged me to use my story as a way to encourage or to, um, find my purpose in it. And I think that if it hadn't been for someone like her being able to see me for who I am and not who I think I am, yeah. um, it's been very encouraging. Like, I think it's really important for women, especially to have a woman see you and you not get caught up in your own, your own stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's actually really powerful when you can have a woman see you, like see you and see the greatness yes. and then actually help to bring that out of you. So that's pretty powerful. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about uh, what you're doing. Like, what are you doing right now? Oh, um, right now I'm actually um preparing for my last and final um book project. So I had mom, I had mommy and queening was my first um my first project. The second one was queening, where I had women talk about their journeys from um not loving themselves to how they learned to appreciate who they were. And then the final one is wifing and queening. So this final um anthology that I put together is about seven of us women talk about being wives and how we, we navigate that world. Because to be honest with you, that was tough for me. I mean, I grew up an only child uh, <laughs> and my parents were together. My, my father was in the military, so he was gone a lot. It was usually just me and my mom. So I didn't always see like the dynamic. So coming into marriage, you know, you have this fairy tale of what it should be. And me with my perfectionism, you know, you have your idea of what it should be, but really understand what marriage is, marriage is and how to be a wife and things like that was actually a struggle for me. So uh, we're talking about different things. You know, I have women on the on the book that talk about, you know, God's perfect timing, you know, how they met their person and how, you know, another woman talks about, you know, uh, how her love for her husband, how she hasn't had like a story, like, you know, how some people have terrible terrible stories to be honest so I'm working on that as a part of just my rounding out my the last once the, once the last of my reign but just kind of talking about the things that wives and mothers talk that we don't really talk about but I feel we need to have so we can feel like we connect and we're not the only ones that experience certain things so. wow that's powerful so when is that going to be out pretty soon that's actually coming out on um, April 30th April 30th of this year. So in about six weeks, maybe. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Now tell me, so you're still in, I mean, reigning as Mrs. Delaware? Yes. My last uh, day is going to be May 7th. We crown the new, we crown the new queen May 7th. Oh, wow. That's pretty awesome. Yes. Are you excited? Yeah. Did you have a great journey? Yes, I had a great journey. Um, I'm excited. It's kind of bittersweet. You know, I, I really enjoyed the year. Um, and it's going to be hard to to not be. Well, I mean, I'm going to still continue to be in in the community and stuff like that. But I also have sister queens that we that we kind of reign together. So it's going to be hard to not have them all the time, like I usually do. But at the same time, I know it's another it's another person's moment, and I'm I'm excited to see who the next person is going to be. Well, and it sounds like this was a great launching pad for you for your future for what 
God's going to be doing in your life in, in the future. So what's in the future for Miss Alicia? Do you know? My gosh. Um, That's a tough question. <laughs> it's a tough question. Yes, because I don't know. I um, And it's okay. Really it's know. totally okay. <laughs> it's totally okay if you don't know. I mean, you know, I was one of my mentors. He's late now, Miles Moreau. He, he said 97% or 98% of us don't really know. And so you're mm. good. You're in a good number. But okay. <laughs> yeah, at least you're on your journey to find out and discover your why. So um, yeah. it's been so great talking to you. Now, my last question for you is I love to find out your top three um, wisdom nuggets, I call them, or pearls of wisdom. So can you tell us the three things that I mean, you can just encourage people. I'm not going to really make it tight. I'm going to leave it open. And so let's hear about Alicia's top three wisdom gems. Oh, yes. So I would say when you're in the moment or you experience those moments um, to embrace it, um, that's one thing I think is important is to embrace the moment because I think we're always looking for the next thing that when the moment's there, you kind of just let it fly by and not really truly embrace it. So I would definitely say, you know, embrace your moments, live in the moments because they may only come like once in a lifetime. So that's important to embrace it. Also, always make sure you have your tribe. Um, it's been important for me to have people surrounding me that see me for who I am, that pray for me, that don't, you know, just tell me yes or, or you know, just go along with me just to make me happy. I've been blessed to have good people around me. And I think that's important. So I would tell people to definitely make sure you're surrounded by good people that are encouraging. And again, I'm a Christian girl. So I always say, keep God first and trust the process. I mean, we, we forget sometimes that things aren't going to be easy. So we may feel as though, because it's not looking how we feel it's supposed to look, we lose sight of the truth, like the actual journey. So just trust the process, trust that it's all going to work out you know, how it's supposed to work out and just live life. <laughs> no, that's great. And uh, and you yeah. you truly have done that. Um, you can see it in your story. And uh, one of the things that um, I've heard a long time ago by this one female evangelist, and she said, the journey to obedience is terrifying, but you have to go anyway. <laughs> and yes. so, so yes. that, I mean, that's, ex I mean, it was so powerful when she said it, because you know yes. how you step out there and you do something that you're, you've never done. Nobody's ever done it in your family. You're just like the first yeah. one jumping in to some deep water and it's terrifying, but you have to do it anyway. And I think I saw a lot of that in your story, how you had to lean in anyway, so that you yeah. can get what you, I mean, really to get yourself back. Because yeah. you can, we lose it ourselves in all of the stuff that we're dealing yeah. with. So I think you really have some key components about really not losing yourself. Or if you lose yourself, you got to make sure that you go back and you find it. And I love how you said, you know what, I had to go back and find out what makes me, what gives me joy, what brings mm -hmm. meaning in my life. And so that was that, that drive, that vision helped you to navigate through any of the barriers or challenges that you were facing. So that's pretty awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely been a journey. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So any other story you want to share with our audience to help them to no. move forward? I, I just say, um, like I said in my in my platform, just make sure you do not get lost in your roles. We have to make sure that as women, we I think we have a sense of taking care of other people is selfish or it it, it makes us look like um not sorry, not sorry, take care of ourselves is selfish and take up uh, taking care of others is, is what we should be doing. And I think that's one of the things that I fell into that as long as they were good and I'm taking people are seeing that I'm taking care of them, that things are okay. And I would just encourage people that it's not selfish to make sure that your mental health is okay. It's not selfish to make sure that 
you you know you're getting back to the things that you enjoy because you were a person before you were a mom you were a person before you were a wife so it's not selfish as you want to revisit those things so for me it's just important to not get lost in the roles but just remember the things that you enjoyed and things that you did before you became those roles man that's so critical so important so thank you for sharing those tips with us if anybody wants to get in touch with you or get your books um how could they do that oh i'm sure yeah so my uh my instagram is the alicia shaw so it's t-h-e-a-l-e-s-h-a-s-h-a-w um my blog page is alicia siobhan.com so that's a-l-e-s-h-a-s-h-e-v-o-n.com and if you go on that blog it's a uh, link to the books to purchase the books that i have so i um also do blogging. I haven't been up to date on it, but you can also read some things about me and my thoughts on that particular blog, but you can also purchase books as well. That's great. And then do you do speaking engagements and things like that still as well? Yes. Yes. So if you're um, interested in, you know, reaching out for me for a booking engagement, you can also email me at Alicia Siobhan at hotmail.com. Okay, awesome. Well, it has been so amazing to talk to you and to hear about your journey. And um, I'm excited about what's next. So I'm definitely going to be bringing you back to see what you have ventured into a little bit later. I'd love to. I'd love to. Yes, yes. Yes. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. 